All right, it's been a couple days since my last video on the Trans Am. Malibu's still kind of at a standstill, but we're gonna go back into the Trans Am and I'm gonna pretend like I didn't just paint the toilet with my insides. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <coughs> All right, under the dash, we had the factory wiring harness was hacked into a good bit. We had leads running places that didn't make sense. Inline fuses, you could see in my hand, those led to what I assumed was a power wire that went into the door panel. You can see the pass through that rubber boot and into the door panel itself. Couldn't make sense of that. I assume power windows again, but who knows? You can see the mega squirt box, all the loose wiring, gauge wiring, different types of wiring. It was just kind of, again, big mess. First thing I did was I yanked the dash out and you can kind of see and impress upon you how ridiculous the wiring really was. But this was just a starting point, and a lot of this all related back to the engine management system that was on the car. First thing I did was I yanked the mega squirt system out of the car, and I just set it out. I tried to take my time so I wouldn't tear anything up so I could find somebody that would want to purchase it after the fact. You can see the gold box itself, keyboard, dash, the dash bezel, the full wiring harness, all that stuff. Also had a boost controller that was mounted in the glove box. It was a piece that was Velcroed in that I think I showed you guys last video. But otherwise, the system came out pretty clean and easy. Not a ton of cuts or splices into the harness that they actually provided. With that system out of the way, you can see things started to get a little more clear. You can see some random leads coming off the factory harness. That stuff I had to track back, investigate, terminate things that were just live power, and kind of just get it tucked to where I wanted it before I rewrapped the harness in some Tessa tape. Not ideal. Tessa tape is basically just a, a cover up for certain things. But in my opinion, on factory chassis harnesses like this, you can't really get a better product. It goes fast, nice and easy, and looks clean when you're done. I'm gonna talk about Tessa tape. I talk about this. It's just like a fabric tape. Now, if you buy a car or you you know you're looking at a wiring harness to purchase from somebody, and the whole thing is just wrapped in this stuff, generally speaking, they're just trying to hide something. I only use this on OEM factory harnesses that are crusty, dusty, and old and I just want to tidy them up a little bit, but it does a good job. It is what it is. You get it on Amazon or wherever, rock and roll, but do not wrap everything with this. Please don't. Just use it when it's going to be out of sight. Fortunately, the dash pad did not survive. This big crack was already in it. It split to about here when I went to pull it out, kind of game over. If you are into F-bodies, you already know that having an unbroken one of these is like a unicorn. Inside the car, I got the dash back in, center console back in. You can see I still got to do the glove box, but all the wiring that was dangling on and come through the center console, that stuff's all pulled. I still got to go back and refinish the center console. It's just dusty and crusty. Hit it with some armor all and some interior finisher. It'll look and smell like new again. The cluster surround is still popped out because I'm putting a Haltech IC7 dash in there. So I have not bolted the column up because I'm going to pull that thing out, get everything seated nicely. And then I'll have a nice dash in the car ready for the ECU. But there's plugs. You can see like buttons everywhere. The car is just outfitted with different buttons that were plugged up everywhere. So I may look for a different center console piece. Refinish the interior a little bit. But for the time being, the wiring harness is tucked. We're in good shape. And we can turn our attention to the engine bay. Now, engine bay, I did some work off camera. This whole thing was just bolted up here. These are the relays for the radiator fans. Um... It, it works. I mean, obviously everything's in there. You got fusible links and rather fuse holders and blah, blah, blah. Just not clean. Everything was run through the front of the core support to the front of the radiator. You have two pusher fans and you have one puller fan on the back. The only reason that concerns me is you shouldn't need that much fan when you have a stand-up radiator. You should be able to just go off one really nice puller fan and be good. But intercooler in the front, trans cooler stuffed in there. Who knows? Either way, we'll find out when the car's together if this thing's going to cool it or not. But for now, I have the fuse boxes pulled back. You can see, I don't know what the, i got to figure this stuff out, but I don't have a factory wiring harness, but they cut into the factory harness to get that bare minimum. You can see the fuse in line there. There's one power lead that was used for, I think, main power on those radiator fan relays I just showed you. Your main power post, you have a power wire that comes all the way up to the front of the car and terminates. You can see that little, you can see, let me zoom in. That's just temporary. I just wanted a key on to make sure headlights worked and taillights, turn signals, all that stuff, which went well, except for the headlight motor sounds like this. It's 
So stripped headlight gears are typically the problem with that and the cause of that. So disassemble the headlights, get a gear swap in there. It's a nylon plastic gear you replace with brass. There's a couple companies that make different options for that. So I'll have to do that at another time. For now, we're just trying to clean up all the junk in the engine bay to make it a little more presentable. Whew. All right, movie magic. It's more presentable. So if you couldn't tell, uh, I've done a little bit of work off camera. Uh, I finished that last clip and then I ended up just saying, screw it. And I stripped all the paint in the engine bay. I rewrapped all this wiring harness. I still have to pull this harness up and through, reinstall the bumper, but um, the shock towers are painted. The back firewall is painted for the most part. Some areas I left unpainted because they're going to get destroyed anyway when I go to put the motor in, screw it. But all the fuse box wiring is tidied up. Shock towers look great. Everything is in good shape. And I'm not a professional painter. I'm not like a, a body guy by any means. But I will say that a good scuff and spray and good prep work and then your average dupli color perfect match. I mean, for what I'm doing with this car, that's more than enough. Sweet. Sweet. All right, now that that's out of the way, you may remember I pointed out this 5.3 short block. This is what I was going to use in this thing. This short block was out of the Caprice that we built for Drag Week. And the reason I had to pull it out was it pushed the rear cam bearing out. So original plan was replace all the cam bearings, pin the cam bearings, and then drop it in. If you're interested in what pinning the cam bearings is, if you Google, you know, pin LS cam bearings, there's a couple really cool videos out there. So if you've had an engine that spun a cam bearing, that is an option. Obviously, trust your local machinist before you trust yourself or me with any advice. But anyway, this is not going in here anymore. I took a plunge and scooped an LS3. So this unit is gonna be powering this unit, but we're gonna to have to upgrade this with a bunch of BTR parts to make sure it can handle the little bit of baby boost I'm gonna shove down its gullet. It's worth noting before I get into this because I'm gonna pull that engine down, do lifters cam, a bunch of stuff. I said LS3, there's a bunch of fanboys that are gonna be like, it's not an LS3, it's got DOD, it's L99. Okay, you're right, The it's an L99, it's not an LS3. My apologies. The block, the heads, everything else is the same, rotating assembly. No, it's not, it's slightly different. I don't care, it's the same thing. LS3, L99, same thing. Everyone shut up, it's the same thing. Oh, dude, fifth gen, fifth gen Camaro people could be the worst. He doesn't have an LS3, it's not an LS3. Almost as bad as the G8 L76 people. It's basically an LS2. No, it's not, it's not an LS2. Actually, that's proving my point. I'm just as bad as them. Oh man, it's a bummer. Anyway, first things first, I gotta get this thing ready to put on an engine stand, which means popping flex plate off. And that's it actually. That's all I do to prep to put this thing on a engine stand. So I'll rip the flex plate off and then I'll get to tearing down accessories. It'll take a little burp session. We'll go from there. There's so many dingles hanging off this engine that I won't end up using, but I do plan on hurting it. I'm gonna hurt you so good, bud. Gonna be a good time. Okay, it's found its way onto the stand. I gotta break down all the accessory stuff. So from the engine mounts to the front accessory drive intake, basically I gotta pull the whole thing down to a short block anyway to do a cam kit. So I'm going to get to work. I'm going to just plow through this. If I come into anything interesting, I'll show you guys, but I'm guessing it's going to be, hoping it's going to be a fairly straightforward teardown. Okay, it was. It was about as straightforward as it comes. So balancers off, accessories are off, intakes off. Getting ready to pull valve covers, see what we find. Again, I don't know the history on this motor specifically, but it was a good runner and it had 200 plus PSI compression in all eight cylinders. So hoping for the best but prepared for the horst. You know how it goes. So that's a first for me. I've never had the valve cover need to be pried off. And this gasket is just basically glued to the cylinder head. Like I couldn't, I couldn't film it because I was having, I thought I was gonna have a stroke just trying to get this freaking valve cover off. But inside the head looks pretty damn clean. Like high mile motors, you'll see crazy bronzing on the rockers. They'll all be all beat up and you'll see bronzing on all the casting. And this thing looks, Nice. I'm worried what else I'm going to find because there's no way it's going to be this clean throughout. I guarantee something's going to be just all the way jacked up. 
give you a sneak preview. This is what I was talking about on these valve covers. I can't, oh gosh, I literally can't get them off without, <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> they just don't want to let go. <laughs> come on, come on. You making me look like a damn fool. Gosh. Oh, same deal on that side though. Super clean. All right, what's gonna be wrong with you? Something's gonna be wrong with you. I can smell it. All right, there you have it. Heads are off. Obviously rockers and valve covers are off. And the short block doesn't look terrible at all. I mean, it's used, obviously. I didn't expect a new engine, but it looks absolutely usable. Now this is a DOD motor, so you can see the DOD cylinders. Looks like this one's We'll see how that one fares. I, they didn't have a DOD issue, so all the lifters should still be fine and not collapsed or beat up. But obviously, if you've ever done a DOD to elite, you know what a pain in the ass the DOD systems are. So, rip the lifter trays out or the lifters out. The alley cover, all that stuff has to go to get DOD out of there. We'll rock and roll on this thing. More pleasant surprises. Uh, if you've done junkyard engine teardowns, the front cover is usually dark brown because they just people just don't change your oil. This looks like a brand new GM cover, like it's never been run. So that's awesome. Again, I know there's going to be a gotcha somewhere in here. Um, the tensioner itself is not broken. You see the orange guides on these generation engines, those plastic guides break all the time. They get lodged in your oil pickup tube. So the fact that those aren't broken, the fact that this is super clean, the fact that all the lifters came out nice and easy, there's no bronzing in any of the cast parts. So far, so good. Sick. Had to make a quick run to the shop. Good morning. After some considerate elbow grease, this is what we're left with. So, I'm stoked. I mean, the short block itself, there was no crazy metal in the oil. There was no like signs of crazy abrasion or it's beating itself to death. All the surfaces cleaned up real nice. I got everything cleaned out. The deck surfaces cleaned up. I have cylinder heads and a bunch of junk over there. I got a bunch of junk over there. But the focal point here is that we have a bare short block that's ready to get a camshaft shoved inside of it and a bunch of other button up stuff we can do. In the meantime, I still need to order an oil pan for this. LS3 oil pan is not going to work with the F body K member. So I need to go, I need to get an oil pan. I need to get a new oil pump. I don't know that I want to reuse the factory DOD oil pump, a couple other small things. But in the meantime, like I said, we'll get the camshaft in there. We'll get the thing timed. We we'll keep rolling on. So what cam are we putting in that long block? I'll show you. It is the BTR red hot camshaft. Now here's something that some people don't know about the BTR red hot camshaft. The Red Hot Cam is also their Stage 2 LS3 cam. It's also their PDS Stage 2 Torque camshaft. The reason for the name is they put that shit on everything or in everything. So this cam is something they designed in-house, the Lopes specifically. And the reason that there's no longer an LS3 Stage 3 cam is because this Red Hot Cam makes within a couple horsepower of what the previous Stage 3 used to make. And it has way more friendly lobes. The lobes aren't as hard on valve train. Everything's been redesigned front to back. It makes killer power. It is not meant for turbochargers. So obviously I'm going to use it for a turbocharger because, you know, that's how, that's how I roll. And it probably will piss Nick Evdos off. And like if I can make Nick Evdos mad, everything is great. Like that's my only goal is to piss that dude off. All right, let's cut this sucker open. Any BTR cam you get will always have two seals, one on each side. Dynasty.com. The only place to buy your cams is Dynasty.com. Shout out. Camshaft comes in this blue condom, ribbed for my pleasure. And the old red hot, baby. Chili pep. Also, cam card comes with it. Don't be as reckless as me when it comes to... Please ensure to thoroughly clean, dry, and apply assembly lube to the camshaft for installation. Sick. That's cool. A little, that little logo is pretty sick, right? Dope! Scope! With the cam in the actual short block, 
Obviously, as I go in, I keep it nice and lube, dude. You gotta lube her up. We're also gonna have to do a three bolt to a single bolt to three bolt conversion. So four bowl, four pole, <laughs> four pole timing gear, ARP uh, cam bolts, and then also LS6 style chain damper. Dynasty, we do sell this as a kit. It's just called like the three bolt cam conversion kit. We have this available to purchase on the website as well. But with the cam tucked in there, now I can chuck that on with the chain and get this thing in time. <laughs> Movie magic. So we got our cam retainer plate, heads bolted up, new cam gear, chain, LS6 style uh, guide. It's not really a tensioner, it's just a guide. And all the front end of that stuff's done. Next up is lifters. So BTR sells their lifter sets. These are Delphi LS7 lifters, American made. They're not like some Chinese overseas whatevers. When you get these, they come in this cool tray. The first thing you're gonna do is read the instructions. It's super, super easy to not read the instructions, but if you just read the instructions, it tells you, hey, look them over, make sure they're not beat up, there's anything wrong with them, inspect them, and then clean the F and H out of them. And once you're done cleaning the F and H out of them, then you let them soak in some oil. That's basically what this says. Read this if you buy lifters. Read it, don't just throw it away, read it. And then clean these and let them soak in oil before you put them in your short block. And also buy new lifter trays from dynasty.com because we sell these dynasty.com. Not a plug, dynasty.com. Buy them on dynasty.com. What's cool about this BTR tray that they sell you or they, they sell with their Delphi lifters is once you're done individually pulling each one of these lifters out, cleaning it, inspecting it, you can then use this setup to soak your lifters. So no more ruining your old lady's friggin' Tupperware and she's getting mad at you like, you got nothing to put the pot roast in. This is why your brother was a better, I should have married your brother and he's a better lover and everyone hates you, Logan. I don't even have a brother. But if I did, I'm sure he'd be a better lover than me. Reaching a stopping point for the day. And I know this video is kind of long-winded with not a lot of progress, but you can see that the short block is basically together. I need to order an oil pan for this thing. The LS3 Camaro 5th Gen oil pan will not clear the K-member that this thing has. So I will have to get an oil pan on the way. I got the heads soaking. This is a, something I do with junkyard motors. I just soak the cylinder heads in E85. A couple of can, old cans full of water to displace some of the fluid. It's about five gallons of ethanol that those things are soaking in. You can already see the combustion chambers are cleaning up. It is, uh, it's nice. You just let them sit there for overnight, come back into them in the morning and all the junk in the intake uh, port, it's all coming out and it just, it makes it way easier to clean these things up. Yeah, you gotta spend a little money on fuel, but it makes the cleanup way easier. Got a bucket of parts that still needs to go back in it. More boxes of parts that need to go in it. And then a bunch of scrap. But either way, the car is still making progress. Soon enough, this thing will have a long block in it, a TH400 in it, and a turbo kit in it. Not bad for the two weeks I've owned the car. Let's go!